cap spending, we grow the economy, and we responsibly raise the debt limit. And there's only 15 days to go. How has the president handled this? The exact same way he's handled the border. He ignores it and hopes it goes away. But President Biden and Senator Schumer are stuck on no. They have no plan, no proposed savings, and no clue. Apparently, President Biden doesn't want a deal. He wants a default. Mr. President, my message is very simple. Do not miss another deadline like you just missed on Title 42. Our country cannot afford it. The Republicans will always act responsibly and will also always look for solutions. With that, let me bring up our majority leader who's worked so hard to make this day come to fruition, Steve St Scalise. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and congratulations to our speaker. How about this team? Once again, House Republicans came together to solve a major crisis facing our nation, a crisis that was created by President Biden's failures. President Biden walked in on his first day in office with a commitment to open up America's southern border. He took direct action that has opened up our southern border and started a flood that we have never seen before. Over five million people have come into our country illegally since Joe Biden took the oath of office. That's more people than the entire population of my home state of Louisiana that have come into this country illegally. And it's getting worse. Today, the day that we passed this important bill to secure America's border, the strongest bill that this Congress has ever passed at a time when our border's never been less secure. And you had the Secretary of Homeland Security. Today, Secretary Mayorkas said the border's not open. Well, Mr. Secretary, if 10,000 people coming across our border illegally is not open, I would hate to see what you think is an open border. This is a crisis that needs to be fixed. The House didn't sit around waiting on the Secretary or the President to do their job, even though they failed. We took action to protect every community in America that is now a border town. The devastation from our open border is affecting every community in America. Today in America, 300 young people will die from drug overdoses related to the fentanyl coming across our open southern border because of President Biden's failure. Tomorrow, another 300 young people will die. When is the president going to finally stand up and do something to stop those deaths? Do those deaths not matter to President Biden? They matter to us. And we took action to do something about it. It's long past time the Senate do something to address this crisis. It's long past time for President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas to do something to address this crisis. If they're going to continue to fail the American people, we're not going to stop working for those families who are struggling under the weight of the devastation of these failed policies. And the man who helped us get the votes to pass this critically important bill for the American people is our whip, Mr. Tom Emmer. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. More migrants have died at our southern border in the last 12 months than at any 12-month period in the history of this country. Cartels are trafficking children and smuggling deadly fentanyl into our communities. Border Patrol has apprehended nearly 200 illegal crossers who are on the terrorist watch list. Border Patrol agents are exhausted and being pulled off the front lines with morale at an all-time low. And all of this was happening before Title 42 was set to expire. In the last few days, we've gotten a glimpse at what our southern border will look like if Biden's open borders agenda continues. 10,000 crossings per day, as the uh, majority leader just said, pure chaos uh, in the speaker's uh, comments, uh, the president's words himself, pure chaos, all because Joe Biden and his administration has let the world know our borders are open. And make no mistake, it is intentional and it is not humane. But today, Kevin McCarthy and House Republicans have stepped up to provide another common sense solution where Joe Biden and the Democrats have failed. After two years of intentional disregard from the White House, House Republicans passed legislation that builds the border wall, 
strengthens asylum laws, ends Biden's mass parole programs, and humanely addresses the horrific child trafficking business at our southern border. This bill is simple. It disincentivizes illegal immigration and reinstates the policies that were working before Joe Biden got in the Oval Office and let his self-made border crisis get out of hand. It's a slap in the face to our border communities, to law-abiding citizens, and to legal immigrants that the Biden White House and Schumer Senate are already set in their opposition to this bill. Their obstruction means innocent children will continue to be inhumanely subjected to sex trafficking and child labor. Legitimate cases of asylum will continue to be stifled in an overrun system. And illegal immigration will continue to be incentivized while legal immigrants wait years to become citizens the right way. It might not be great optics for a Democrat party that has embraced illegal immigration and total lawlessness as part of their platform. But it is the humane thing for Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer to do to address the crisis head on and make sure the secure, the, secure, uh, the border act becomes law. Migrant lives and the safety of American communities depend on it. And with that, our conference chair, Elise Stefan. Thank you, Tom. I am so honored to stand here with my House Republican colleagues. Yet again, the mainstream media underestimated this House Republican majority. And yet again, House Republicans delivered results for the American people with the passage of the Secure the Border Act, the strongest border bill in the history of the United States Congress. This bill was one of our key pillars of our commitment to America. Since day one, when Joe Biden was sworn into office, Joe Biden's policies have caused this catastrophic border crisis. And it's not just a border crisis. It's a national security crisis, an economic crisis, a crime crisis, and a humanitarian crisis. And the American people know that Joe Biden's failed open border policies have turned every district into a border district and every state into a border state. In my home district in upstate New York in the North Country, we've seen an over 800% increase in illegal crossings in the Swanton sector on the northern border just in the last year. Border Patrol officers who I represent have been transferred over and over again to our southern border to deal with the unprecedented surge of illegal crossings. Fentanyl overdoses ravage communities across this country in each and every one of our districts. House Republicans Secure the Border Act will end the Biden border crisis by finishing the wall, advancing border technology, supporting our brave Border Patrol officers, ending catch and release, and fulfilling our commitment to America, a nation that is safe. And one of the leaders for years, for decades on this issue, I'm honored to introduce my colleague, Congressman Mario diaz Balart. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me... Uh, let me start by quoting the president's actual SAP veto message on HR2. He claims that the administration's approach to border strategy is, quote, safe, orderly, and humane. You know, one would really have to be delusional to believe that almost 300 Americans dying every single day due to fentanyl, mostly coming from the southern border, is safe. Frankly, one would have to be severely out of touch with reality to say, to, to, to relinquish control of the southern border to those narco terrorist cartels that are now the ones who determine who comes in to the southern border. And one ha would have to be really callous to say that the death of 900 migrants and nearly 90,000 children, minors, lost and traffic is humane. That's not humane. That's insane. Since the Biden administration and, frankly, the Democrats, since they've totally abdicated their responsibility to uphold our national security and protect the American people, I am so proud that the House Republicans, once again, have stepped up. HR2 secures the borders. It provides much needed support to our brave, our brave heroes, the men and women, the officers of the CBP. 
It protects children, those exploited children that even the New York Times has stated are being exploited. It protects them from exploitation and human trafficking. It defunds the narco-terrorist multi-billion dollar cartels that are now the ones who decide who comes in through the southern border and who are running the southern border. It streamlines our broken asylum system that is hurting so many, including those who have legitimate claims for asylum. And, and I'm so proud, it reestablishes the rule of law. The rule of law. I am so proud of this Republican conference. And in la carta oficial que el presidente sacó hoy, esta semana, en su oposición a esta ley, el presidente de la administración dice que la situación en la frontera es, está segura, organizada y humana. Eso lo puso por escrito la administración. O sea, francamente hay que estar severamente desconectado de la realidad para decir que los casi 300 norteamericanos, jóvenes, que mueren todos los días, todos los días, eso es porque hay una frontera segura, organizada y humana que la muerte de los 900 inmigrantes, 900 inmigrantes, el número más grande de la historia de los Estados Unidos, que fallecieron el año pasado, en este, este año, y 90 mil niños que están siendo abusados y traficados, traficados, que eso es seguro, organizado y humano. Y cederle el control de la frontera sur, a los narcocarteles, que son los que deciden ahora quién entra y quién sale y por qué precio. Que de alguna forma eso es seguro, organizado y humano. Y humano. No, no, no. Esta ley, esta ley sí es humana. Desafortunadamente el presidente y los demócratas rehusan, rehusan defender la seguridad nacional de los Estados Unidos y proteger al pueblo norteamericano. Y por eso estoy tan orgulloso que hoy los republicanos de la Cámara tomaron acción y acción seria y positiva. Esta ley fortalece la seguridad de nuestra frontera. Brinda apoyo necesario a nuestros agentes oficiales en la frontera. Protege, protege a los niños, a las niñas, a las mujeres que están siendo abusadas en este proceso. Mejora nuestro sistema de asilo. Y muy importante, restablece el Estado de Derecho, que es la razón por la cual todo inmigrante que lleva generaciones o que está tratando de llegar ahora, viene a este país. Restablece el Estado de Derecho. It is my privilege to introduce a man who, if anybody has any doubt, the definition of a workhorse, of a man who is keen and smart and never stops working. What a privilege it is to introduce my colleague, Mr. McClintock. Thank you. You know, we tried to do this a few years ago with a much larger majority, and we failed. Mm -hmm. The difference this time was the Republican leadership, starting with Speaker Kevin McCarthy and, uh, of course, Chairman Jim Jordan and the rest of the team that wouldn't take no for an answer, that, that kept everybody talking, kept everybody together. Uh, uh, ultimately to reach a, a common conclusion to pass this historic legislation with a much slender majority. You know, our borders were secure on Inauguration Day. Uh, the, the, the Remain in Mexico policy had slowed illegal immigration to a trickle. Uh, the border wall was nearing completion. Uh, ICE was actually enforcing court order deportations. And yet that very afternoon, Joe Biden reversed all of these policies and initiated the largest illegal mass migration in history. And you know, I've never understood how our schools are made better by packing classrooms with non-English speaking students, or how our hospitals are made more accessible by flooding our emergency rooms with illegals uh, demanding uncompensated care, or how our communities are, are made safer by introducing criminal cartels and flooding them with fentanyl. Uh, or how working families are helped by flooding the labor market with cheap illegal labor, or how our social safety net is strengthened by adding millions of impoverished dependent aliens to it. This measure restores the policies that secured our border 
and makes it harder for future presidents to refuse to enforce the law. You know, without enforcing our immigration laws, we have no borders. And if we have no borders, we have no country. History warns us that countries that either cannot or will not secure their borders simply aren't around very long. Now the Senate needs to act. And if it doesn't, then ultimately the American people need to decide how far down this road they want to continue because this will continue until the people responsible for these policies are removed from office. And I thank all of you, and I'm very pleased to, to introduce Representative Juan Siscomani of uh, Arizona's 6th District, uh, who did yeoman work in keeping the sides together and bringing us together. So thank you. I stand here today as a proud product of the American dream. I became a United States citizen in 2006. And today, 17 years later, I can stand before you as a member of the United States Congress. I, uh, <laughs> I also stand here as a representative of Southeastern Arizona. What's happening at the border is not part of the American dream my family pursued and thousands of other families also continue to pursue today. We've seen babies abandoned in rivers, migrants dying in deserts, high-speed car chases through neighborhoods, and 85,000 children disappear after being released from HHS custody. We have a border crisis, a humanitarian crisis, and on the front lines are our border communities. Americans have been failed by the government designed to protect them. While our country suffers because of this administration's inaction, House Republicans have passed a solution. HR2 gives our agents and officers the resources they desperately need, closes loopholes in an abused asylum system, and it protects innocent children from harm. This last part was very important to me from the get-go. I'm a dad of six. My kids' ages range from four to 14. I can't help it but look at, the, look at these kids and think of my own kids. And think of when my family brought me here as a young boy as well, and what I was thinking and what I was going through. This bill is a step away from the chaos we are seeing and a step closer to helping others achieve the American dream that I've been so blessed to live. Estoy aquí como un orgulloso producto del sueño americano. Me convertí en ciudadano americano en el 2006 y hoy, 17 años después, estoy aquí frente a ustedes como miembro del Congreso de Estados Unidos. También estoy aquí como representante del sureste de Arizona. Lo que está ocurriendo en la frontera no es parte del sueño americano. Para mi familia no vino, no es parte del sueño americano que mi familia vino a buscar y que otras miles de familias también están viniendo a buscar. Hemos visto bebés abandonados en ríos, emigrantes que mueren en el desierto y persecuciones de autos por vecindarios. Y 85 mil menores de edad han desaparecido después de haber sido liberados de la custodia, de la custodia del Departamento de Salud y Servicios Humanos de Estados Unidos. Tenemos una crisis en la frontera, tenemos una crisis humanitaria, y las líneas de fuego son nuestras comunidades de la frontera. El gobierno le ha fallado a los estadounidenses en vez de protegerlos. Mientras nuestro país sufre por la falta de acción de esta administración, los republicanos de la Cámara de Representantes hemos pasado una solución. La ley HR2 brinda a nuestros agentes y oficiales los recursos necesarios que desesperadamente necesitan. También cierra los hoyos del sistema de asilo que han estropeado y, protege, y protegen muy bien a los niños inocentes de cualquier edad. Este proyecto de ley está en un paso, es un paso fuera del caos que estamos viviendo y es un paso más cerca hacia ayudar a alcanzar a todos los demás el sueño americano que yo he tenido la oportunidad de vivir. Muchas gracias. Thank you. And now it's my honor to introduce uh, one of the leaders that have 
made this possible, and that is Chairman Mike McCall. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. I want to thank uh, the speaker uh, for doing something that no other speaker in the history of this Congress has done, and that's passing the strongest border security package. I want to thank you personally. Thank you, sir. Because he brings us together. And I want to thank leadership, the chairman involved. It's a real team effort to get here. You know, I've been dealing with this issue for quite some time. I was a federal prosecutor, U.S. attorney in Texas on the border, uh, and it was bad. I was chairman of Homeland Security Committee, and we passed border bills. But I've never seen the border like it is today. It is absolutely out of control. Even the chief of the Border Patrol said we have lost operational control, and we lost it to the drug cartels. They are on our border. And nobody sees it more than my Texas brethren and women behind me who bear the brunt of this. My legislature appropriated $4.5 billion just this term to deal with a federal responsibility. And you know, the sad thing is it didn't have to happen. It was a self-inflicted wound. We are on the path to securing this border under the previous administration. But what did this Biden administration do? on day one, with a stroke of a pen, rescind the migrant protection protocols remain in Mexico, which means you have to remain in Mexico pending your asylum. When they rescinded that, the cartels aren't stupid. They understood, hey, it's open for business. Green lights on, come on in. And guess what they did? And they knew if they could get people in, the catch and release would apply. Five million encounters, five million people in this country in the shadows, no legal status. What in the world are we gonna do with five million people? And the saddest thing is that the ch it's the children that die on the way. 35% get raped on the dangerous journey. These stash houses, my orcas is, is, a, is guilty of child abuse in my opinion, by not vetting the sponsors of the parents, supposedly, or sponsors of these children, allowing 10 to 20, 30 kids to go to a stash house, then to become victims of sex trafficking, child slavery, forcing them into a criminal network and a criminal enterprise. The 100,000 deaths of young people to fentanyls pouring, coming from China, going through Mexico, coming into the United States. My children have been to five funerals. Friends, dear friends, who took what they thought was Xanax or ADD medication and they never woke up. This is real. That's more than what we lost in Vietnam over two decades. It's just unacceptable. But today, we're bringing solutions as Republicans. You know, the first bill I ever introduced in Congress 20 years ago was to end catch and release. I am so proud of this day because this Republican majority got it done. And we're going to end this policy. We're going to return to the policies that worked and stop this nightmare that's happening all across this country. So I want to now turn it over to a great leader, chairman of the Homeland Security Committee, Worked very, very hard together. Had a markup till three o'clock in the morning. And uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman McCall, for that introduction and your friendship and mentorship. Um, you know, a lot of people in this room made the prediction that when we elected our speaker, this group of Republicans would have a hard time coming together that the conflict that happened in that uh, episode would divide us so much that we'd get nothing done. Well, 87,000 IRS agents, gone. An energy bill that will turn back on American energy, done. A debt ceiling responsibly increased. And now, and many, many other things, and now, the most conservative, strongest border security bill 
in the history of the Congress. Yeah, sometimes conflict can divide, but in this case, it made us one team. And the work that has happened to make this bill a reality today on the floor, there are tons of people to thank. It starts with the leader and the, and the speaker doing amazing work, mentoring all of us that were out on the front lines. It, it goes to my committee, the men and women in that committee who busted their butts to work together to get it done, and our staffs. I have to thank the staff of the committee for doing an amazing job. And the leader and the speaker's staff, too. But most of all, most of all, I want to thank the men and women of the Customs and Border Protection, the blue and the green, who are out there serving this great nation, sacrificing themselves under horrible conditions brought on them by the decisions of this president and secretary. And make no mistake about it, every American is at risk. You got children? How about that little baby in a VRBO in Florida? crawling around on the floor that died by encountering fentanyl left by the previous renter. If you have children and you're going to a hotel, think about that. And thank Joe Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas. Every American is at risk with this open border. And we have had it. The American people have had it. And we have responded with a great bill and I ask the senators, as the wave of people come across the southern border and cities are declaring states of emergency, to think about it. You say you're going to not support this bill? Think about it. Americans are suffering. Americans are dying. Do something. Vote to send this bill to the President of the United States and let's la have that President who has ignored this speaker on the debt ceiling, ignored the border, ignored the economy, ignored the veterans who sacrificed so much in Afghanistan and walked away. Let's get him to the table and do something for this country for once. Pass this bill, secure our border, and save this great country. I will be followed by one of, the, one of the greats, my mentor, Jim Jordan. Uh, so I didn't know I was last till, till a few minutes ago, but I'll just say this. On January 3rd, I gave a nominating speech for the speaker. And I said in that speech, I think our task this Congress is pretty straightforward. Pass the bills to fix the problems, rein in the crazy spending, and do our oversight, do our constitutional duty. And this Congress, we're doing that. House Republicans are do we're doing the oversight. We passed the debt ceiling bill, as Chairman Green just mentioned, that would actually get control of the crazy spending. And contrary to what Punchbowl reported this morning, we are passing the bills to fix the problems. We are passing the legislation that we promised the American people we would do. We said we would get rid of 87,000 IRS agents. We did. We said we'd pass an energy bill that made us energy independent. We did. We said we'd pass a parental rights bill. We did. And we said we'd pass immigration enforcement border security bill. And we did today. I always say we make this job way too complicated. It's really pretty basic. What did you tell the voters you were going to do when you put your name on the ballot and you ran for office? If they elect you, go do what you said. And House Republicans, under the leadership of Speaker McCarthy, are doing exactly that. And the key is we have to continue that for the rest of this Congress and make the American people understand we are representing them at this critical time in American history. With that, I yield back to the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. The House Republicans continue to offer solutions. We all knew this date was going to be here, and the White House ignored it. We will not ignore the problems and will continue to work for the American public. That was our commitment to America. It's the commitment we're keeping. With that, let's open up for questions. Yes, Jake. Uh, can you give us your sense on where the talks are? We just passed HR 2, and you want to talk debt ceiling.